Good morning, everyone. And good morning to you, Miss Kelsey. I'm good morning happy to you. you. Thank you. What a beautiful sunny day we have today. I know it is gorgeous outside. I know it makes me think spring and summer might be coming soon. I hope so. <laughs> I love spring. Me too. Anyway, just to get outside will be wonderful. Yes. Oh my goodness. I just love it and my dogs love it. <laughs> and I heard a little rumor that you have some unusual pets. I do. And I have one with me right now. You do? Somebody came to play at story time? They did. What is that? This is Rune, and Rune is a leopard gecko. A gecko? Yes. You see his back? Is that why he's called a leopard gecko? Because yeah. Left. What a beautiful markings. He is actually <laughs> called a Halloween mask leopard gecko. Why? Um. Well, if I can get him to cooperate here, if you can kind of see, he's got some pretty cool patterns on his head. Oh, he does. What a beautiful animal. He is very, very cool. What and did you say his name is? Rune. Rune. Yes. And he's also got a friend named Peach. And <laughs> she is um, like an orange color. She, that, which is why her name is Peach. But I bet she's a peach of a friend. <laughs> she is. But Mr. Rune here. He's a pretty chill little guy, so I thought I would bring him on today. What are his feet like? They had little teeny, teeny, tiny claws on them. So he's not the kind of gecko that sticks to things like some geckos do. Okay. He actually um, likes to climb. Like in trees? Yes. Um, so okay. usually I will keep like... Um, some driftwood or something in his little enclosure and he likes to climb on that. He really though just likes to go in his little rock hide and <laughs> just stay in there. He's not real active. <laughs> well, it is the day. Is he a nocturnal animal and likes to be awake at night like hamsters? Um, a little bit. He more so likes to be active in the afternoon and early evening. So... Oh. Like at dusk. Yeah. Yep. And then sometimes like when it's real, real early in the morning, like right before the sun comes up, they like to come out and see what's going on. Do they wake you up? No. Um, they don't really make noises. So they're pretty quiet. They do make little squeaking noises when they're babies. But yeah, when they're um grown up like this is, pretty... is a gecko an amphibian or a reptile they are reptiles wow does it like yeah. to swim nope no swimming <laughs> no nope. okay nope. they well, do I... like water though you can give them little baths every once in a while if you need to and they're pretty okay with that they're not especially fond of baths but They'll tolerate it. My friend Wes has a snake and he Ooh. spritzes it with a, <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Bless you. Is it with a water sprayer? Oh. I wonder if your gecko would like a water sprayer. Kind of like going in the summer when kids go through the sprinkler. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every once in a while they do get a little spray. Um, <laughs> they are actually from an arid region. Um, mainly in Pakistan and Iran. And so they don't like a whole lot of moisture. So you can't spritz them too terribly often. So, so don't most put people, in the bathtub, I guess. Yes. Most people think they come from the desert, but they actually don't. They're actually from an arid region that's really rocky. And so that's why their little claws come in handy so that they can climb on rocks. Well, Rune sure likes to climb on your hand, I see. He does. <laughs> He'll probably end up somewhere here on my shoulder or back. I don't know. If he ends up on your head, we'll probably all be laughing. <laughs> Sometimes he does do that. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing Rune to meet us today. What oh, a fine animal he is. And you said he has a friend named Peach? 
He does. Is Peach a girl or a boy? Peach is a girl. Oh. Hmm. I know. Girl. Which is a nice way to start talking about our books for this month. Well, it is a new month. It's March. It is. So did you know that March is um, Women's History Month? I did know that, actually. But maybe right. boys and girls don't know that, so we can teach them about it. This yes. Time. So March is Women's History Month. So this month, I am going to be featuring books by women authors um, and women illustrators, and sometimes maybe even about women. Well, I see today you have all three. You have a female character, yep. a female author, yep. and a female illustrator. That's three women writing that book or I know. that book. Well, I'm eager to see what this lady knows about dinosaurs. Oh, she is so cool. Okay, we're ready. All right. So let me go here. There we go. <laughs> now we can see it bigger. So this book is called Dinosaur Lady, and it is about Mary Anning which was the very first paleontologist. And if you don't know what a paleontologist is, that is someone that studies dinosaurs. A paleontologist. Yes. Oh, that's a big word. That is. All right. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her hometown. She filled her basket with curiosities to sell to tourists like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones, devil toenails, and angel wings. Devil toenails? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, now I'm really curious. <laughs> she scrambled over cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding life-threatening landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long buried secrets, no matter the risk. And there she is climbing over all the rocks. And I think I can see a couple of fossils there. Yeah, up in the corner. That's yeah. Cool. I've seen snail shells like that. I have too. <laughs> Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school, but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils she found and she needed answers. She borrowed books and copied scientific papers. She sketched intricate drawings of her discoveries and she made notes, lots and lots of notes. Well, I bet she could write a book with all those notes. I bet she could too. One morning when Mary and her brother were exploring the cliffs, they saw something surprising. Nestled in the rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. <gasps> An eyeball? Oops. Right there. Oh my goodness. What is it? I don't know. I think we're about to find out. I guess so. Carefully, they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four foot long head with a pointed snout. Oh my. A massive jaw and hundreds of teeth. Ooh, it was ooh. frightening, but Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. Look at that, that is a big head. That is a large fossil for sure. It is. They coaxed workers from the village to help dig it out and carry it home. <laughs> that is big. That is huge. While the men returned to their work, Mary set out to find the creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding. It had to be buried nearby. But where? Day after day, Mary scrambled over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched. Month after month. And there she is, searching the rocks. Well, she didn't give up, did she? She didn't. After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The powerful wind and pounding rain 
from a storm caused several landslides. And one night, the cliff's ancient layers were exposed, layers that would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel. Something caught Mary's eye. Bones. There in the rocks? Yeah, see them right here. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be. I don't know. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs, vertebrae, and flippers. Oh, I bet it's a sea creature. <gasps> Was it a crocodile? Fish? Lizard? <gasps> no, Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Look at the size of that flipper. I know. That is a huge flipper. Are you sure it doesn't live in the water? I don't know. I think we're going to find out, though. All right. I'm curious. <laughs> but many of the villagers were scared. Soon, they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich, a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Annie family survive for months. The collector donated it to a lo London museum and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. It. They studied, calculated, debated. They named it a name which meant fish lizard. <laughs> the word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. Oh, maybe it's a relative of your gecko, Rune. Possibly. <laughs> He's got a head shape like that a little bit. A little bit, yeah. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's spine wasn't just old. It was millions of years old. Their declaration shattered the commonly held belief that the earth was only 6,000 years old. Also, no one had realized that a species could become extinct until they studied the remains of a creature that no longer walked the earth. See, there they are making drawings of it. That is quite a skeleton. It is. While others discussed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. There she is, still studying dinosaur bones. Is this a real person that lived? It is. Oh, my. I know. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy pebbles inside skeletons. She examined them reread her notes, and studied her drawings. Mary figured out what they were, except it was something that a lady shouldn't talk about. <laughs> Do you see that? I wonder what it could be. See, right, right there. I don't think it's a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but Mary was more of a scientist than a proper lady. So she proclaimed that these stones were actually fossilized poop. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my guess. Look at that man <laughs> laughing and laughing. <laughs> I know. She all just sneered. Scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and realized she was right. Mary's discovery helped scholars learn more about what ancient creatures ate. Oh, huh. That's pretty cool. Yes. Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable, ordinary, at least on the outside. Curious, she cut one open. Tucked inside was a small pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water turned the substance into ink. Mary's discovery proved that ancient aquatic creatures squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. That's pretty wow. cool. Ink. Who would have guessed? Right? Although, don't squids emit some ink when they're startled or scared of a predator? They do. Maybe this dinosaur is like a long-distant relative. I wonder. I wonder, too. When Mary was 24, she made another amazing discovery. 
this creature didn't have legs or flippers. It had wings. Uh oh. Oh. Mary had an earth a prehistoric flying reptile called a. I'm not sure. <laughs> Dinosaur name confuses me. They confuse me. We'll have to get this book and practice reading it because yes. a lot of dinosaur names are long and hard to pronounce. And yet, I, even though I have trouble, I know four-year-olds who can say all the names of the dinosaurs. I know. I think it's pterosaur, but I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, I have a friend named Maury, and he knows lots of dinosaur names. Yes. Sometimes. In the Discovery Garden Playroom, we have lots of books about dinosaurs. So sometimes oh, yeah. to look up pictures to see what they're called. Yes. I have a friend named Carter who used to come to my story times. And he used to tell me what the dinosaur names were when we read dinosaur books. <laughs> I might know that same person. Did he have a brother named Quinn? He did not. Oh, it's a different Carter then. Yeah. Yep. He have friends who like books. <laughs> Around the world. Scientists were talking about Mary's incredible discoveries, but they weren't talking about Mary. Not at first. Well, even that's though, not fair. Right? Even though Mary could identify a species from one single bone and rebuild entire skeletons like a jigsaw puzzle, she couldn't join the Geological Society of London. Women were not allowed. She couldn't attend lectures or teach university classes or even take classes. What? Right? That is so unfair. It is. But Mary knew her discoveries were important and would change the way people viewed the Earth's past. And so did many geologists, scientists, and scholars. Because where did they go when they had questions? Straight to Mary's cottage. <laughs> yep. Eager to learn more, they followed her over the cliffs, even if it terrified them. And it did. <laughs> just like long buried fossils mary's achievements have slowly been uncovered and shared with the world her daring discoveries helped form paleontology the branch of geology that uses fossils to study prehistoric life and she did all that with a homemade hammer a chisel and a never-ending quest to fiercely fearlessly keep exploring and learning she was definitely curious. She was. Yeah, persistent. She never gave up. Yep. And then if you guys want to check this book out, which you can get this from the main library, and I believe Northside probably has a copy of it as well, but it has all kinds of fossil facts. It's pretty cool. Well, I like that story. I do too. You know, girls can be anything they want to be they if can. they study hard enough and practice. They yep. can achieve it. But there was a time in history when girls and women were not given opportunities to do things like that. And it's kind of a terrible part of history. It is. So since that was a long one, I have this fun little book by Sandra Boynton to share with you guys. And it's called Dinosaur Dance. Uh-oh. Well, if your gecko takes a peek at this book, he might start dancing. Right? <laughs> I saw him crawl up on your shoulder. Yep. <laughs> on my back now. <laughs> oh, my. I guess you can feel it. Yep. Just those little, little claws. <laughs> Saying, Buff, Kipley Pal, the dinosaur dance is starting now. <laughs> The blue stegosaurus goes shimmy, shimmy, shake. The red brontosaurus goes quivery, quake. <laughs> I bet their stomping would make the floor shake. I bet it would, too. Triceratops goes tappity tap. And pterodactyl goes flap, flap, flap. <coughs> Tiny little dino goes deedly dee. <laughs> I don't know his name. What could it be? I don't know. Looks a little like a horse. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> Velociraptor twins go bumpity bump, and Tyrannosaurus Rex goes stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> T Rex is my favorite. Oh, 
My favorite is Triceratops. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, they're pretty cool. <laughs> Iguana Don goes, Dippily da. And the tiny little dino goes, Cha, cha, cha. <laughs> yes, the tiny little dino goes, Cha, cha, cha. <laughs> now, everybody wants to try the Cha, cha, cha. And there's a little dinosaur leading all the big dinosaurs. <laughs> At the end. Bravo. You know, it would be funny to imagine all the dinosaurs having a party, maybe dancing around a campfire and stomping and the whole ground is shimmering and shaking. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. And then parents will say, what is all that racket? <laughs> <laughs> Good choices today, Miss Kelsey. We enjoyed those stories. Thank you. Do you have some stories for us too? I have somebody you might like to meet. Ooh. <laughs> She's a little cranky, I have to admit. Look, it's my friend, the little lady. She's a little old also, but you can't talk to her about being old because it makes her very mad. Ooh. So don't call her an old lady. Just call her a nice lady. But one day, this friend of mine had a very bad experience. Oh. Yes, and would you like to know about it? I would. Okay. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I hope not. There was an old lady who swallowed a spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. I hope not. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. Meow. Imagine that to swallow a cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a dog. A dog? What a hog to swallow a dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. I hope not. I know an old lady who swallowed a goat. Just opened her throat and swallowed the goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how she swallowed the cow. My goodness. She swallowed the cow to catch the goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. 
I know an old lady who swallowed a horse. She's dead, of course. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I guess that's what happens if you swallow a horse. The end. <laughs> that was a good one. That is a crazy story. It who, is. Who, would, who would swallow a horse? How could you swallow a cow? Wouldn't the goat say no? I would think so. That is a weird lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the old lady was trying to get that fly outside of her stomach. And sometimes I guess if you were talking and laughing, the fly could just go. Zoop, oh, and you would swallow it, but you didn't really want to. Yeah. Now, would the gecko like to eat a fly? I don't think so. He may, but he likes to eat mealworms. What's a mealworm? A mealworm is just a little teeny tiny worm, and they eventually turn into beetles, but you have to keep them in the refrigerator to keep them cold so they don't turn into a beetle. Well, that's interesting. It is. They can also eat crickets, but... He doesn't really like crickets. No. Does he eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? He doesn't, but wouldn't that be fun? I don't know. If he ate a whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I think he would be like the old lady and his tummy would be totally stuffed with food. And then he might get sick in his stomach and, and then he'd have to lay down and have a big, long sleep. <laughs> I right? think so, too. You know, my grandpa, he used to fall asleep on Thanksgiving dinner day after he ate the big dinner. He was too full. So I bet that would happen to Rune if he ate too I bet it would too. Huh. They, he does like to take a nap after he eats his mealworms. <laughs> and how many would he eat for a meal? Um, I usually give him about 10 and he doesn't eat every day. He eats usually about every other day, sometimes once every two or three days. It just depends. You can kind of tell when they're hungry. Sometimes they like to go on hunger strikes and not eat. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe when he's laying on his big piece of wood that you said you put in his cage, it, he just lays there and he's dreaming, you know, he's probably dreaming of gecko playtime and he doesn't think about eating, I guess. Yes. And geckos, they don't hibernate like <laughs> some animals do, but in the winter, they do something called brew mating. And what does that mean? That means that they're not very active. And sometimes you won't even see them move for a very long time because their body cools down and they sleep a lot. But they're they're okay. They're but just that could be very scary, Miss Kelsey. If they don't move for a day or two, you might think they're like Yeah not anymore. Yeah, so that's a good thing to know when you have a leopard gecko is that sometimes they just, they're not real active and sometimes they're a little crazy. In the summer, they get a little more active. Well, this one looks like it likes sitting on your hand. He does. <laughs> or maybe he likes being on TV. <laughs> I think he does. Are you a little celebrity now, Rune? <laughs> Well, let's see if Rune can sell. Oh, do you have any news? Um, nothing new that I can think of. Um, just tune in for our cooking classes that we have every week. Um, those are on Tuesdays, I think. Maybe. <laughs> wiggle worms. And, Don't forget about wiggle worms. Yes, wiggle worms is every Monday at 11 o'clock with Miss Kathy. And she had a special guest on Wiggle Worms this week. If you haven't seen it, check out our Facebook page. Because... Oh, you the tease. You're not going to tell us who was the visitor? Oh, okay. well. Can you give us a hint? I will give you a hint. Okay. Um, Miss Rachel was with her, which she is the newest person in youth services at um, the library. And she's 
played a special instrument during story time. So you need to check out the recorded link and see what she played because it was pretty cool. I will make sure I watch that so I can know the secret. And then yeah. next week I will tell you what I find out. And boys and girls, you could do the same thing, right? Yep. Yep. You can watch on Facebook or on YouTube. Excellent. Yep. So all this month of March, we will be reading stories about women and girls. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And maybe the old lady will make a return after she gets rid of her bellyache. Maybe <laughs> she only looked like she died, and maybe she's really just needing a nap. <laughs> could be. Or, or to go outside and ride her bicycle for exercise. Ooh. That would probably make her feel better. I bet it would. <laughs> so the new children's library room is open in the main library. It is and that to get there, we have to go up the stairs. Is that right? Yes. So okay. we have flip-flop spaces with what used to be our computer lab. So we are upstairs on the second floor now. Okay. You guys need to come in and check it out. It is so pretty. And there's so much light. And we've got it decorated for spring. We have all kinds of flowers and butterflies. How wonderful. And will it's your gecko ever be a visitor there? I don't know. Oh, it's another secret I see. It you're, is. You're teasing us. We'll have to we'll have to ask Miss Ruby. Okay. <laughs> well, I have a little news too. Tomorrow is art camp day and we will be printmaking. Uh, oh. and it's very fun and unusual because our print block is a styrofoam plate. Ooh. Maybe next week I will bring you some of the art that the children create and I'll show it to you. That would be awesome. All right. That's what I'll do. Yay. I guess it's for us to sing goodbye. And we sing goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. We'll see each other soon. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Goodbye, gecko. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas. See you next week.